infotainment, a basket for arts and entertainment. Uga mfasasi chonji ukulira. Degutuma ziwa kutinkani za msangruso sabwera. Tikuze ni kutukunarichani nkani za msangruso komanso. Kukaliso chani nkani za msangruso. And my name is Sam Banda Junior. In this edition, legendary poet Benedicto Okomata ni Malunga speaks to us about a new project, a new poetry project coming up coming up uh, later this month and this is titled Ulariki Wamoto and again uh, dramatist uh, Smith Likongwe finally launches his book titled Southern African Plays 2 and again uh, General Alliance uh, uh, donates to Vilipanganga movement uh, donating a PA system for them to work on some of their performances as well as other projects we've got lots more to tell you on that as well as other stories in the arts circles. All you can do is stay right there as I bring you more in infotainment, a basket for arts and entertainment. Now we begin our program with news that saxophonist Danny Valley, all the way from Lilongwe last Sunday performed at HS Winehouse in Blantyre and it was all good sharing the stage with other artists such as ethnomusician Waliko Makala. He also had time uh, to share the stage for a moment with uh, Amos Mlolowa, a drummer as well as a producer and it was all a good moment as people appreciated the best of his skills on the saxophone. We'll give you a short performance of how it was when Dan Swally was performing. Let's take a look at Dan Swally's performance. Danis Valley there giving us a share of the skills of his saxophone. He's an artist, a veteran artist who's done uh, a couple of performances with the different artists including soldier Lucius Banda. So he came down alone to HS Winehouse uh, to give us a dosage of a performance and you saw the best of how he can play his uh, saxophone. Remember, you're watching Infotainment, the basket for arts and entertainment. And my name is Sam Banda Jr. Moving out of music, we go to theatre. Uh, one Smith Likongwe, he's a well-known uh, playwright in the country. He's written a number of plays and he's also a drama lecturer at University of Malawi Chancellor College. But now he's started a project of documenting plays. He's worked on... Uh, 
uh, a number of uh, uh, he's published a number of books by the way uh, but now he's shifted from writing other books to widen the scope and reaching out to fellow dramatists in southern africa so he released or published his first book uh, that's southern african plays collection in 2018 but now he's out with the second part and that's the southern african plays 2 which he launched at Gordon Peacock in Blanta that last Sunday. There were, there were also performances uh, where uh, he used uh, some of uh, uh, his students, both former and present uh, from Chancellor College, uh, who are doing drama, to work on some of the extracts from the plays. Where there is infotainment, and we captured the moments uh, when uh, uh, basically the book was being launched. And we also spoke to Smith Likongwe as well as uh, Benedicto Okomata and Malunga, who was the guest of honor. This is how it was. <coughs> so you are raising me for this West Bend project? No, I'm telling I'm getting rid of this guy and I will take you back better. No, please, please. It was sent for my woman here. I would be praying of God to dispose of your body, Bella. So, you have been undressing for him. Please, shut up, you man. I'm ecstatic. I am overjoyed because of the fact that we have still been able to launch the book in spite of the circumstances surrounding. And I'm very happy that uh, the people came and. Uh, I don't complain about the, the number of people because you were all aware of these times. Uh, but uh, in short, I'm ecstatic, I'm happy, I'm overjoyed that uh, we have finally launched the Southern African Plays 2. The, the, book, the book is about uh, uh, the lives and times of, uh, of people of Southern Africa uh, because it, it contains the plays from Southern Africa with the different styles, unique styles from Southern Africa. Uh, it has uh, uh, various themes. The seven plays each has its, its own uh, on different themes. We have uh, themes uh, ranging from uh, uh, politics, uh, you know, uh, uh, sex, uh, sex life. We have uh, themes like uh, uh, nepotism. We, we have uh, uh, all sorts of things, uh, all sorts of, of themes uh, in the play, uh, including also chieftainship, disease, uh, and all that. So. It's uh, generally uh, various uh, themes and issues from the southern part of Africa. Uh, going forward, uh, let me just uh, reiterate what I said uh, in my speech that uh, as uh, we have launched the Southern African Plays 2 uh, today, this is just uh, the beginning. I am going to hell. There are times when a man has to take his medicine like a man. It's been a very, very important development uh, in as far as uh, in this country is concerned. Uh, for Smith to have edited a book that um, has received contributions from some of the finest minds in drama in Southern Africa is in itself, I think, an indication that as a writer, he has really made giant strides in his area of specialization in drama. And uh, as somebody who has seen him develop, I was most delighted to be here to support him and to appeal to fellow Malawians that when we have got our own stars here, we should be in the habit of giving them appropriate support so that they can continue to shine. What are you doing here? Do you work for Jungubai the Great? Well, I'm supposed to be Jungubara the Great. You are not Jungubara the Great? Well, well, I'm sorry. Answer my question. Are you Jungubara the Great? I, I am Anusa. Anusa Ndara. From Tie Bwananyambi in Mangochi district, Malawi. Yeah, that's how it was during the launch of Southern African Plays 2 a book by Smith Likongo. He's written a number of books, Kamuzubanda and other plays, as well as uh, uh, there are also other books, which is uh, 
he's written. So he's uh, actually done well in terms of uh, documenting some of these plays. And as prelites, there's need to document all these stories so that uh, they, uh, the younger generation can embrace that as well as learn more from some of these uh, stories. Moving on, uh, uh, we also, uh, we're sticking on to the same issue. Uh, Benedicto Okomata Nimalunga is a name, uh, when you talk of, of, about poetry, uh, it's uh, uh, basically known by many. He's done a number, a number of poems, uh, and one of the, uh, the popular ones is Ndizakutengira Kunyanja Lignete. So it's been some time since he released uh, new works, and this time around, he has decided to bring out uh, his uh, uh, anthology of poetry. That's a new project, and this is titled Ulariki Wamoto. So this project will come out later uh, this month, and we caught up with uh, Benedicto Okomata Nimalunga to tell us more about this project, Ulariki Wamoto. What is it all about? What is this Ulariki Wamoto? Even if you say you shall never find love in the sharpest petals of a crimson rose in the wind, nor beneath the boughs of trees at dusk, or upon some unknown horizons that hang afar like the curtains of eternity. You shall never find love in the most sentimental of innocent verses, for these are merely broken reflections of reality from the cracked mirror of the visions of poets and madmen. After four years of hibernation, uh, I decided to come out with uh, a CD, which has about 29 poems. It's called Uladi Guamoto basically because the themes I have touched on are themes that are hard hitting. Uh, it's like fire burning you. And that's why you notice that even the flyer has the, uh, the poet, you know, in flames, as if he's being consumed. Um, to indicate that uh, this is not your usual uh, Chijewa poetry, it's poetry into which a lot of thought has been invested, uh, a lot of creativity has gone into it, so that by the time it hits the market towards the end of this month, Whoever buys it should be able to walk home and say, yes, somebody worked for me. Um, Ulari Kwamoto has coincided, of course, with the COVID time. Uh, and I have written, actually, a lot of poetry, both in English and in Shichewa on COVID, when it was just starting. And now, when a lot more Malawians have been affected by it, I've also captured the experiences. But those experiences in the poetry of COVID I've talked about have not found their way into Ulari Wamoto. Ulari Wamoto deals with a wide array of themes. You're talking about what death does to us when we lose those we love so much. You're talking about how mothers look at their children when the children have been negligent you know, to them. You're looking at how short-sighted people uh, uh, choose partners wrongly, only to regret later. Uh, and other equally topical issues that touch on human frailties. When we wrote about COVID-19, our intention was neither to scare nor to be a scatological. We wanted to protect a nation we loved with so much passion and could not afford to just alarm it. We cared for our beloved compatriots as the usual doubting Thomas's ruthless recorders names to score cheap and temporary points, but we swallowed our pride with humility as they choked us with a scorn. An ant rises from the cliff. It wanders on the flow of life again. It goes to the market, only to discover fellow humans wearing masks and shoes, washing hands every 20 minutes. It goes to bank only to find we are being scammed at entry. Yeah, that's the beauty of uh, poetry and uh, the very last uh, you, uh, you heard from uh, Marshallo Samilo. Uh, he was reciting his poem 
uh, during the launch of uh, Smith Likongwe's book, that's a Southern African place too. And you also heard from uh, uh, Benedicto Okomata Nimalunga, who was the guest of honor during the launch of Smith Likongwe's book, and he also had performances. But in this case, he was uh, talking about uh, his new project, Ulaliki Wamoto. By the way, uh, on Sunday, uh, on Sunday, uh, Benedicto Okomata Nimalunga will be performing at HS Winehouse in Blantyre that's coming face to face with Faith Musa. So uh, a very, very uh, rare meet there between uh, Faith Musa as well as uh, Benedicto Okomata Nimalunga. So they, that's music meeting poetry. That's on Sunday. So looking forward to that as well. Uh, but uh, still sticking on to poetry, uh, we now move to another item. Uh, for those of you who have been patronizing uh, performances by Vilipanganga Poetry Movement, and these guys basically meet at uh, Kwaharaba Art Gallery in uh, Blanda. That's every Wednesday. But due to COVID, they went on a break. But despite being on a break, they've uh, got support from uh, General Alliance Insurance Company, which decided to come out after seeing their best works. Uh, they decided to donate a PA system. These guys have been operating without a proper PA system. So uh, General Alliance coughed in uh, around 600000 to buy a new PA system and they've donated it to Viripanganga movement. So we're there when they're making the symbolic presentation of the PA system. And we speak to uh, co-founder of Viripanganga Poetry Movement, that's Paul Sezi, as well as uh, um, an official from General Alliance Insurance, that's uh, Pamela Mazengela. We hear from the two. Garu Yungwandani. All dogs have their days, and the wise say, I know of lucky dogs who have had theirs too. I know of dogs who don't just have one day. I know of dogs who have had a hundred days. Days of chewing and swallowing, days of swigging and shindigging, days of carousing and uncouthing, days of boring and birching, days of flaunting and fating. Uh, we are so excited yeah. and we are very happy, appreciative, uh, because of uh, the gesture that uh, General Alliance Company has uh, shown us. We have been struggling a lot uh, for the past maybe four or five years with the peer system. And uh, I must also hasten to express uh, gratitude to Flood Church because they have been so good with us all this while. They have been the ones lending us a peer system uh, to use for all our sessions that we have been uh, holding. So for General Alliance to come forward and then give us uh, this uh, beautiful peer system, we are so grateful, we are so appreciative and we are excited about the future because our work is going to be much more uh, uh, easier uh, this time around because we have now a peer system that we can use at any point. We usually go out to schools to do uh, motivational talks and then perform in those schools so it will be much much easier to simply carry our peer system and off we go and deliver the job that we are actually uh, uh, there for. We all know what government um, uh, said about uh, the, the measures in arresting the uh, spread of COVID-19 and uh, we were also complying with the same, but we, we, were, we are now looking at the situation to say I think things have now improved and we want to uh, kickstart our, our event, events uh, from next uh, week, which will be on the 17th. On the 17th, we're going to have uh, our first event from 6 o'clock uh, to uh, 7 o'clock in the evening. 17 is going to be Wednesday next week, and uh, this is going to be the beginning of uh, our uh, evening uh, performances. We decided to donate the PA system to the Panganga system movement because was, they came and we saw that there's a need in this uh, art industry and most this, this pandemic uh, time, most companies are not forthcoming to give up money. Everyone is trying to sustain what they really have. So we said we felt like it's really important that we help them because uh, if we don't, they go. Uh, basically, I feel like every industry has its connection somehow, somewhere. We, we, people can say there's no connection between insurance and art, but we feel like every in the industry, we need to work together as one because at the end of the day, we're all Malawians. So if we promote art, and then we promote, uh, we promote art, we promote music, we promote anything, as long as we're all Malawians, we feel like we 
this is our country, so it, we feel like this industry needs a hand. Rabbit dogs with zippers open and ready to roll, they go this way and that way, hot and ruffled, here and there, back and forth, on the move, in and out of skates of black, red and green. They woo our wives to our common day. Yeah, that's how it was. That's how it was during the donation of uh, general uh, uh, insurance, giving it to Viripanganga Poetry Movement. But continuing with the program, uh, continuing with the program, we now move on to another item. Jacaranda Cultural Center and Mezo Dira Flance has been closed for some time due to COVID-19 pandemic. But then they are reopening, they are gradually reopening, and one of the uh, one of the things that they are reopening this uh, uh, this coming Monday is uh, the French studies. So uh, we caught up with Moshu Poya Chapeteka as well as Moshu Blessings to tell us more about French studies and how key is this language of French. Basically, why should a Malawian learn French? We hear from Moshu. Uh, Poya Chapoteka as well as Moshu Blessings. Uh, bonjour Blessings. Bonjour, ça va? Oui, très bien, mais c'est toi? Très bien, merci beaucoup. Oui. Uh, tu es prêt? Bien sûr, je suis prêt. Bon, allez, on y va. On y va. Well, uh, we are opening on Monday, 15th March, after closing for some time. Uh, so, since we've uh, lost quite a huge amount of time, uh, people should expect that we will really be working intensively trying to catch up the lost time. Uh, it's, it's really been tough. Uh, we encourage students to keep on working on their own, but uh, you know, a language, you still need interaction. So uh, we are having actually our next exam session in, um, uh, in October. So Yes, we've been trying to give some exercises to our students to practice, and then when we resume, at least from there, we expect to move forward so that they are ready for the next uh, exam session. French is very important for each and everyone. You've just talked about culture. Culture, we are talking of music, arts. We've got uh, music from French-speaking countries, uh, of artists from French-speaking countries, they play music in French. How do we enjoy the music better if we don't know their language? So it is important. And then, you know, like giving people, they, they follow what is happening outside there. Sometimes, you know, when you listen to people trying to pronounce names of artists or names of cities in France, they really struggle. So if you all know how to speak some French, you'll be able to speak, uh, to pronounce these names without any hassle. Well, uh, the French language is a language that is quite beautiful, a language that is spoken in many countries across the globe. And it is very important for one to learn the language because it uh, makes him uh, to, uh, you know, uh, be exposed to the world. As uh, my colleague has just said about the Francophone organization, this organization, you know, uh, gives a platform to people to interact with the French-speaking world be it in terms of uh, entrepreneurship, 
or scholarships for those to, to study. You may wish to know, you know, it's, it's um, something that is known to everyone. In Malawi, our universities, uh, you know, the space is quite uh, small. So we need people to go outside and study. So for one who is uh, uh, fluent in French language, that gives him an, an upper hand to go and study in French speaking countries. Yeah, that's Monshu Poya Chapoteka as well as Monshu Blessings telling us more about uh, the French uh, uh, studies uh, starting on uh, starting this coming Monday at Jacaranda Cultural Center that's in Blanta. On that note, we've come to the very end of infotainment, a basket for arts and entertainment. I hope you've enjoyed what I brought unto you. But before I go, I'll leave you with the story of musician Dan Chazama, who is out with a new project and uh, he's uh, working hard to make sure that people appreciate his works in terms of music. I will leave you with that, but I hope you've enjoyed what I brought unto you. Let's continue to mask up as well as staying safe because there's still COVID out there. My name is Sam Banda Jr. Remember, black missionaries are back on stage performing at Mibawa on Saturday. My name is Sam Banda Jr. I'm out of here. Keep it times. Ciao.